Hello, I am joined by Jonas Schilin from the uh, Swedish Defense Research Agency. Um, Jonas and I are doing a short series on the uh, Russian Baltic Fleet and the Russian Navy. And in this uh, episode, we are uh, going to take the broad picture and look at the Russian Navy as a whole and sort of the, the bigger trends. Um, so Jonas, um, we often hear talk about the Russian military modernization and this process going on. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, how, how, how does that actually affect the Russian Navy? What, what are the sort of the bigger trends? Uh, it, it, it has been a lot of discussion, as you say, about the, the Russian naval modernization program. And, and, and uh, generally, it's received a lot of criticism over the years, with uh, and, and rightfully so, because they, they've uh, scrapped half-finished ships uh, even before they were launched, and they, uh, uh, they've taken a very long time to develop and construct new new projects, new new classes of ships. Uh, so, so there have been indeed been different types of challenges. Um, uh, the, the sort of conventional wisdom is that uh, if, that um, that submarines are still the sort of priority for the Russian Navy, and 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 especially is modernizing the naval nuclear deterrence components. Uh, uh, but uh, um, and also an, another part of the sort of conventional wisdom is that that uh, the Russia has been quite successful when it comes to building smaller uh, surface combatants with uh, armed with cruise missiles for both anti-ship missions and as well as land attack missions. And this is something that's been showcased and tested during the Syria campaign and therefore been got got very much attention. Uh, but and 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 the conventional wisdom here as well is is that that uh, while being very good at that or at least good or successful in that they have been less successful in uh, constructing larger surface ships uh, sort of blue water capability ships uh, and this is uh, this is right from my opinion in one way but but at the same time uh, uh, if you look back the last decade or 15 years, there's been a lot of new projects, new classes that has been developed. And development takes very long time, uh, and uh, perhaps very long time in in in, in Russia. But uh, and and so we have seen very many uh, lead ships coming out, being commissioned and handed over to the to the Russian Navy. Uh, and uh, but what what we're gonna see now or have seen the last one two years is that serial production of these lead ships classes are are, are coming out. Uh, so so even if it took sort of like fourteen years for the for first Gorshkov frigate to come out, we're gonna the coming five to seven years we're gonna see. I think they're gonna planning for having eight in seven or eight years and we see this not only in the when it comes to the Gorshkov class frigate but also the S uh, Severodvinsk SSN uh, submarine and we see it in uh, conventional submarines the, the St. Petersburg class for example we see uh, and um, landing ships and lots of lots of examples of that where just the lead ships has come out and we're awaiting the series so actually I think uh, um, I, uh, I think we're going to see uh, a, not an explosion, but a substantial, a significant increase in in the number of sh ships coming into service. So, so th this is sort of the main train, trend, because the trend before this was was that <laughs> no new ships were c coming into to service. So the new trend is uh, we're going to see uh, a substantial increase. So if if we look, um, as you say, in, in shipbuilding, things take a lot of time. If we look ahead a decade, maybe even two decades, what, what kind of Russian Navy would you expect to see? Uh, well, I think they will uh, have sort of sorted out the problems that uh, arise, uh, arose after the Soviet um, uh, sort of uh, the two decades of uh, poor economy that sort of followed the Soviet, uh, the crash of the Soviet Union. Uh, 
so, so, so uh, I think the, the sort of rate of procurement that is going on right now might uh, go down a little bit, but not so much. Even if they they have said openly that uh, that the shipbuilding industry is going to focus more on civilian production in, in the coming uh, coming years, but but at the same time. The, uh, I think uh, Russian shipyards generally has been, become more efficient, and they have the, the, the effect of having uh, uh, taken over uh, shipyards at Crimea after the illegal annexation of Crimea, and also building new shipyards in, uh, in especially in the eastern part, has sort of fills that gap. So even if they 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 the portion of uh, going Towards building warships and for the needs of the the Russian Navy, uh, I think still going to keep up the, the the pace in quite good. So, so I think in 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 a couple of decades they will have sort of have built around this gap that I talked about in in a recent video. Uh, this uneven age distribution uh, and other trends or I think they're going to be more because of this uh, I think they're going to be more active on the world seas as well uh, because um, um, uh, for example the, the, the new remilitarization of Arctic is something that that's is totally uh, not totally new, but 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 it's something that they really prioritize. And I, they're building ships that are ice classed in a great greater degree. And and in the coming years, they will have two Arctic patrol ships, uh, which uh, ensures uh, better possibilities to navigate, or at least in summer or autumn, navigation up in the in the Arctic Sea. Uh, they will uh, uh, consolidate. The, the permanent naval presence in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, and they will stretch out even into in the Pacific. And uh, for example, w w right now there's a discussion about the, uh, Russia, if Russia will build a logistical naval logistical base in Sudan as well. Um, but uh, but even if they wouldn't be able to to use that uh, port uh, they will try to probably try to see if they can get an, a similar base another place uh, so i think uh, they're going to expand their operations and uh, and especially in places such as mediterranean arctic but also in the pacific arabian sea